everybody, it's Chrissy McCutcheon here. Just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to meet together, even if it's um, not together as a whole body, but um, in our homes. But thank you that you bring us together uh, wherever we are. And we pray that you'd be with our service and those involved in your name. Amen. Morning, everyone. Steve with you from Laurentian Wesleyan Church again. Good morning. Joining me today is my wife, Chantel, on the ukulele. Let's uh, give her a big round of applause. Yay! <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Um, we uh, have been practicing and learning this song for our moms for Mother's Day. So uh, Happy Mother's Day to you and to all the moms out there. And uh, anybody, really, because you all have a mom. And uh, we're just going to play this song called The River, and we heard it for the first time when we were uh, at Beaver Creek with uh, inmates uh, doing Operation Christmas Child, and it's become a very special song to us. So enjoy. reading from Matthew 7 verses 24 to 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who has built his house on the sand the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teacher of the law. Matthew 7, verses 24 to 29. Yeah. Okay. 
my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. O oh Lord, haste the day when the face shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back. As a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I'm sure that you're familiar with the North Bay Courthouse on the corner of Murray Street and, and Main Street West. Uh, for us, it's on the way to the North Bay waterfront, so we've driven by the courthouse many times. Uh, for a long time, the building seemed to be under construction. Every time we drove by, there seemed to be new scaffolding on the exterior. Uh, they were installing uh, big cement columns that, that you can see on these photos here. And it, it did take a long time, almost two years and, and $14 million. The government certainly knows how to spend money, don't they? It's easy to forget that the original building, built in, in 1989, was all brick, as you can see in this photo. Uh, when under construction, I asked someone what they were doing to the courthouse, as it, it, it seemed like it was in never-ending renovations. Apparently, the original building was sinking. Cracks were discovered in the masonry walls of the staircase shafts by the building maintenance staff. And it was at risk of severe damage or, or partial collapse in the event of a, any seismic event. So they decided to shore up the foundation and secure the building's future by building 13 full height shear walls around the perimeter, uh, like the one in those photos. They did a pretty good job because if you drove by today, I don't think you'd, you'd even notice. They look like they've been there all along. Our scripture for today focuses on having a firm foundation. Uh, this whole section of scripture contrasts genuine faith and counterfeit faith. When the foundation of our lives is built on Jesus and what he taught us, we are building a life that will stand. What are the things Jesus said that are foundational to building a good foundation for your life so your house will stand firm when the proverbial floods come? Because the floods will come. The message we just uh, heard from Matthew 7 began with therefore. So we look at what came before. We want to look at three ways Jesus teaches us to build a firm foundation. And so we go back to Matthew chapter 7 starting at verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Jesus makes it clear in John 10 verse 7 when he says, I am the gate for the sheep. To build a strong foundation, it must be built on the Lord Jesus Christ. You would be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't like Jesus. I mean, go down the list. He shone a light on the forgotten and abused. He taught us to love everyone, even our enemies. 
He modeled what it meant to be a true friend. He was wise and authoritative, compassionate yet challenging. Building your life on the teachings of Jesus is a great thing, but that's not enough. A foundation that will last must be built on Jesus. Jesus was clear you must not just admire the gate or speak well of the gate. You must enter through the gate because it, because it is the path of life. That's not really point number one. It's point zero, if you will. It's where it all begins. That's our, our starting place today. With Jesus as our beginning in mind, how do we build a foundation that will weather any storm? Well, number one of, uh, of three today, follow Jesus, not the crowd. Follow Jesus, not the crowd. Uh, I'm not trying to be overly simplistic here, but you will probably not be peer pressured into making choices that build a firm foundation. I'm not saying that all your friends are evil or anything like that, but the pull is usually away from doing what's right, isn't it? Just because the crowd is doing it doesn't mean you should. Uh, you know, for some of you listening, you're hearing your mom right now. <laughs> Just because Johnny jumps off a cliff doesn't mean you should. Well, it's, it's good advice. Don't follow the crowd. Follow Jesus. This is usually counter-cultural. You know, some of you may know the name Dave Ramsey. Uh, he has helped countless people climb out of debt and get their financial house in order. One of his favorite quotes is this, if you will live like no one else, later you can live like no one else. <laughs> Those small good choices made today when it comes to our money they eventually result in big gains later. Isn't that true for our lives in general? So my encouragement to you is simple. When making the right choices hard, remember that you're not building for just today. You're building for the future. And we, we come to point number two as we continue in Matthew 7, starting at verse 15. Watch out for the false prophets they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their, f uh, I'm getting tongue tied today. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. And a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. How do you build a foundation that will weather any storm? Number two, know what good fruit tastes like. I, I have a sobering truth to share with you. Not everyone has your best interest at heart. Sometimes people may appear very knowledgeable, wise, and sometimes we might even say holy and godly. But we need to be careful and discerning. We need to guard against being overly suspicious or paranoid. Uh, that's not helpful. But we do need to be discerning. Discerning simply means to test or examine something. The Apostle Paul, he writes in Philippians chapter 1, starting at verse 9, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. I have found this one to be a bit tricky. Uh, we seem to get stuck in one of two ditches. We become overly trusting and, and can be su susceptible to being led astray. Or we don't trust anyone <laughs> and become isolated from others, only spending time with people who think like us, act like us, or look like us. How then should we live so that those who speak into our lives and have influence are helping build a good foundation. The scripture points to the path. Look at the fruit. 
look at the fruit. As I was preparing this part of the message, I was actually, ironically, eating one of my favorite pieces of fruit, an apple. But not just any apple, a nice, juicy but firm, chilled and crunchy gala apple. I'm not sure if you say gala or gala, but I'm going to say gala. Recently, we bought a ba bag of gala apples, and there was something about them that wasn't right. Uh, they weren't ripened properly or something. The color was off, and, and when you cut into them, the seeds inside had started to sprout. Uh, they made me appreciate a, a really good one. How, how did I know there was something wrong with those apples? I got to know what a good gala apple looks like. We sometimes like to do the reverse. Uh, I'll start by eating the bad apples. Well, uh, we probably wouldn't do that when it came to literal fruit, but sometimes we do when it comes to people and their ideas. There's a little hint of the real taste, so we keep listening and reading and, and clicking. Listen, friends, can I ad admonish you and encourage you in this time when conspiracy theories about our present situation seem to be rising in temperature, please practice this principle. Look at the fruit and keep your diet filled with Jesus' good fruit. Whenever you come across something that may be false, before you click share or spread, can I encourage us to ask these questions? Number one, where where are they taking me? If it's not towards being more Christ-like, it can go in the rotten fruit pile, I think. Uh, second question, what fruit do they produce in others? If they are surrounded by people who don't seem to be acting in a Christ-honoring way, I think it's okay to walk away. Uh, thirdly, uh, what do other fruit experts say? <laughs> Reach out to someone you trust who displays good fruit, godly fruit, and why not ask their thoughts about it? And fourth, which really should be number one, ha have I prayed for God's wisdom about this? We need to watch out for bad apples, both today and always. Thirdly, this morning, how do we build a good, solid foundation that will last through the storm? Well, we continue in Matthew 7, starting at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Number three, a good foundation is built with heart and hands. With heart and hands. You know, as a pastor, can I confess, I find this passage very convicting. Because although every one of us who is a follower of Jesus is called to live for him each day, so much of what I do is tied to Christian ministry as a pastor. And it's so easy to neglect my personal relationship with Jesus, to neglect my heart in favor of the work of my hands. You know, sometimes, again, can I confess, I hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit wanting to do a work in my heart personally. And, and I respond in, in a way by saying, not today, God, but look what I did in your name. You know, it, it reminds me of the stories we hear about uh, the husband who works long hours at work to give his family a better life, all the while neglecting his wife and children and, and losing what he was working so hard for. God wants to know you. God wants to build the foundation in you. The outward stuff comes second, not first. He wants our hands, but he wants our heart first. As anyone who has dealt with leaks in the basement knows, a good foundation is very important. The challenge is 
the challenge is you can survive for a while on a bad foundation, but it will eventually show its quality when stressed. That's what they discovered in the, in the courthouse. The building would probably last for a while with its current foundation, but if there was ever an earthquake, even a small one, it might collapse. So something had to be done. The Apostle Paul wrote uh, these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Maybe the earthquake has happened in your life, and your foundation has crumbled. The things you built your life upon didn't provide the security that you thought they would. Friends, there is hope. In the words of the Southern Gospel song, maybe you've heard it, Jesus is the master builder. He takes the old and makes it new. He can take a life of sin, make it clean and pure within, and he can make a brand new you. Lord, I thank you for your word today. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, uh, when we see problems in our foundation, that we would surrender those things to you. Lord, I would pray for that person that may be challenged today and, and they realize that their, their life is not built on you. Their life is not built on the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that, that we can make that right right now. And we can say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for trying to build my life's house without you. Would you forgive me and come and live in my house and give me life today and life eternal. Be my Lord and Savior today. Lord, I thank you that you are so full of grace and mercy. And Lord, uh, maybe the earthquake has happened and we're struggling. Lord, I pray that you would help us today to make those good decisions with your help and your empowerment through your Holy Spirit. Build that firm foundation. And Lord, we will give you praise. Thank you that you walk with us each day. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.